I've got four things I'm doing at once. Someday I'll learn how to do it. But that makes me feel Thank better. Thank you, Kira. We just saw her name pop up. Right, good. Okay. So we are recording. You're, so all, you're all set. Go right ahead. Thank you very much, Athena. Um, seeing the presence of a quorum, I'm going to call the uh, this meeting of governance, organization, and legislation to order. Um, according to my watch, it's 10.33 a.m. on June 17, um, and we are being recorded. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, this meeting of GOL is being conducted by a remote participation. Um, we will have a period for public comment later um, if public is present. And at that point, if there's public present, I will read the instructions um, regarding how to make public comment. Um, just a few little bits of organizational before we turn to our first item today, which is the review of the anti-Asian resolution. Um, we have um, uh, the sponsors present, which is great. That really um, is appreciated by GOL. I just want to uh, point out before we begin that GOL is concerned uh, pr with the uh, clarity, consistency, and actionability of things like resolutions, proclamations, and bylaws. And we uh, do not engage in a discussion or try not to engage in a discussion of the merit of anything that's put before us. Now, we often slide over that line, but uh, just please keep that in mind that here, our primary concern, uh, our charge, is clarity, consistency, and actionability of the document in front of us. Um, and that's why we like having the sponsors here, because we can engage in a direct <laughs> and the goal is to a document that uh, is uh, both clear, consistent, and actionable, and hopefully uh, what the sponsors want. Um, so that's the goal. So our first item of business- George, George before you start, I yeah. need to call the council to order. Ah, yes, thank you. So given the uh, presence of a quorum of the T Amherst Town Council um, at the GOL meeting. I am calling the Town Council to order at 1034. Also, I think you need to just confirm that everybody can uh, hear and be heard. Right. Okay. So if you'd like me to do that, um, Dorothy Pam. Lynn, can you be heard? Yes, yes, I can hear. Okay. So Dorothy's okay. I'm okay. Lynn, obviously, is yes. okay. Uh, Darcy? Yes. Uh, Pat? Yes. Mandy Joe? Yes. Andy? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Uh, Shalini? Yes. Great. Uh, Tracy? Yes. Thank you. And Angela, of course, is the minute taker. All right. So everyone is um, able to be heard and seen. Um, just for my committee, we're going to follow the agenda pretty much in the order that it is in front of you. But um, I'm going to insert a item not anticipated by the chair um, after item number four. But we're going to begin with item two, which is review of the anti-Asian resolution. Anti um, and so uh, the resolution denouncing anti-Asian Anti-Asian American and xenophobic discrimination is what we have in front of us and we have the sponsors present. Um, and if we could put that up on the screen, is that possible, Lynn? Yep, getting there. Thank you. And is that it? That is it. And if you're able to make that a little bigger, if people are looking at it on the screen, I'm trying to make it bigger, sorry. It's all right, take your time. Use the magnifying glass there. Yeah, you can also do it on your own. Yeah, or down below, that's on your screen. Right? Yeah, you see the little magnifying plus. Thank you. So, um, while that's getting uh, put in front of you, um, the way we normally proceed is uh, pretty much uh, line by line. Um, but 
I usually open up discussion to the committee. Um, but before that, why don't we have uh, one, of, if, there, if one of the sponsors is willing to speak to this, um, what uh, the resolution is uh, for and why you are presenting it. If that's something that any one of the sponsors, I'm thinking particularly of Tracy or Franklin, but actually anyone of the sponsors would like to speak to this um, briefly. Tracy? Oh, um, sure, I can speak to it. Um, so I have a friend, um, one of my friends was working on a similar resolution in Northampton, um, and it was approved by the Northampton City Council in May. Um, and at the time it came to my attention, it was around the time that there was a rally in Northampton, which was called the China Virus liberation rally or something, a political mm -hmm. rally. And um, so it just seemed like a good, and there had been some other incidents being reported around the community. So it seemed like a good time um, for Amherst to maybe do something similar and to um, just reiterate that we're like an inclusive, supportive community. Um, I will say too that uh, this resolution there were similar resolutions that went to both the U.S. Senate and the House of Representatives. Um, they're much longer than this resolution with a, many, many whereas clauses. And so uh, this version is like a streamlined version of that. Okay. So. All right. Good. Um, anyone else? Uh, you can use the raise hand. Know, Franklin, if you have other comments. I, only that um, I, I think I have, uh, I, I, I'm a visiting prof at Amherst College, and several of my uh, Asian American students um, going into, into town from campus have been accosted and harassed and uh, been made to feel pretty unsafe. So uh, we know this can happen um, even here. And mm -hmm. important, I think, that uh, uh, town leadership uh, uh, participate in letting uh, these folks know that that this this kind of behavior is unacceptable and uh, it's happening all over the country and um, it's good if if Amherst can participate in trying to halt this. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Oh, so can I like raise my hand again? Oh, um, Tracy, go ahead. Uh, oh, um, sorry, I was just looking for the raising hand button, but the um, I. I think one thing too is that, you know, I know that the GOL, GOL looks at, you know, resolutions that are, you know, actionable. And so I really see this as sort of a first step um, in terms of, you know, it just calls for this declaration, but then moving forward, like what action items can we do? And I think some of it ties into some of the other discussions that are going on in town about how we can be more inclusive and so on. So, um, to me, there's like that connection. Good. Um, I'd like to turn to the resolution itself and work our way through it and see if we can uh, reach a point where we can have a vote. Um, so I want to start with the title. Um, any issues there? A resolution denouncing anti-Asian, anti-Asian American, and xenophobic discrimination? Yes, I have a Andy, problem. please. Go ahead. Um, I found it confusing the term xenophobic, xenophobic discrimination in the way that it's structured. And I felt would feel more comfortable just switching it around a little bit and having it called um, a resolution denouncing xenophobia and discrimination against Asians and Asian Americans. Okay. Could you just repeat that, Andy? You just as a suggestion again? The suggestion is to change it. And again, it's because the term xenophobic discrimination, right. I kept looking at it and was uncertain as to how, how it was structured and what it was trying to achieve. And then I came up with the idea of a change so that it's saying a resolution denouncing xenophobia and discrimination against Asians and Asian Americans. All right. 
I'm going to repeat that. Um, resolution denouncing xenophobia and discrimination against Asian and Asian Americans. Is that correct? Yes, I like Asian. What you're suggesting. Yes. All right. Anyone else on the committee before we turn to the sponsors with thoughts on the title? And you may have to just speak up. I've got six of you in front of me. But... We've got hands up from Pat and then Andy, then Dorothy. Okay, so uh, Pat, please. Oh. Yes, first of all, I want to say hello to my neighbor, Franklin. <laughs> it's good to see you in a town. And second of all, uh, I'm very grateful to the sponsors um, for bringing this forward. I think it's an extremely important um, resolution. Uh, I have a couple of things, uh, Scribner things. Basically, after every whereas, uh, ends with, uh, we need instead of a comma at the very end of it, a uh, semicolon before end. Yep. And that's throughout the document. Yep. In the fifth whereas, uh, which uh, the, uh, it says the first six weeks, at the end of the sentence, um, let me see, I can't, it says, uh, let me see. I can't. Uh, yeah, this is, where is in the first six? See right. it with all. Let me see. Whoop. Uh, there is a um, a, f a footnote uh, marking. Um, right. And it says um, the end of sentence says their race, and it and it, the one the um, footnote marking needs to be removed. Here we go. It's, we're targeted because of their race. That needs to come out and... Uh, You're suggesting, Pat, that the footnote should come out, but that the... Yeah, second, oh, I didn't see it down there. I apologize. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, it should there. stay there. I have, I have a question about <laughs> footnotes and resolutions. But, we'll yeah, but... Um, um, and then um, in the now, therefore, the first now, therefore, I believe... Yep. Uh, yes. You know, any, uh, maybe that's already been. Uh, I think it's, we're missing an all, A L L. I think it should be any and all anti Asian sentiment or simply yes, anti Asian. Yes. Anti -Asian. Yeah. I, the sponsors can, can lay in there, but I would suggest they wanted to write and all. Yes. But could also just strike the and. Okay. Um, anything else? Uh, the third, be it further. Right. I'm wondering instead of business community, it would just say businesses. Um, sure. But uh, I, that's very yeah. minor. Okay. All right. These, by the way, the sponsors. These are all suggestions, um, and and they, you will will give you uh, time in a moment to respond to them. Um, so, anything else from the committee? I'd like to hear from you first. Um, Dorothy has her hand up. Dorothy's not a member of the committee. So uh, anyone else from the committee? Uh, Mandy Joe, please. Sorry, I somehow missed page two and was wondering where things were. So I'm quickly reading page two. So for every, I agree with everything Pat said for Scrivener things. Right. We normally don't right. start resolutions with a be it resolved. Correct. So I would suggest deleting that Correct whole that. sentence. We just right. normally go right Right. Um, there, there were two whereases that were missing the comma after the whereas. Again, these are very minor things. I think it's the third and the fourth one. That's correct. Um, and I, I did have a question in the second whereas. Yep. There's that reference to a number one and affirming their responsibility as public officials to number one, use their authority to protect all members. There's never a number two or yeah, three. I, I assume you just like yeah. cut the re relevant per portion of that statement and throw it in there. Right. Um, I, I would get rid of the one because <laughs> right. it seems weird. Right. Um, right. And then I think the only thing other that I have is the last be it further resolved. It's the clerk of yeah. the Amherst Town Council, That's not the correct. administrative assistant. Oh, right. Well, I wasn't right. sure. It's all right. I wasn't sure. That's fine. No, this is, this is what we do here is just, uh, you know, make sure they just right. are trust, consistent trust with each other. We do it ourselves. We have, right. 
<laughs> it's not pretty, but so. Um, okay, so I don't see any other members of the committee with um, uh, comments or corrections or observations. Andy's raised, I think, a good point about the title. Um, I have a question about footnotes in resolutions. Um, the rest, I think, are largely Scrivener uh, corrections, but we, in a moment, I'm going to give the sponsors a chance to weigh in. Um, we probably would start with the title. Um, I think uh, uh, Dorothy had her hand up earlier. Uh, Dorothy, did you have something you wanted to add? Yes, I do. Um, I, I think, I, I haven't had a chance to think enough about Andy's title, but I think it's very important to get out the phrase anti-Asian. When you read the whole title, it makes sense. But in my mind, when I was thinking, oh yes, there's that resolution, uh, I would come up with anti-Asian and say, no, it's not anti-Asian, it's denunciation of anti-Asian. So we've got exactly. the double negative. So I think we want to not ever have anti-Asian in the title because it's about the opposite of being anti-Asian. Um, just make it simpler. Um, and Andy's title corrections, I don't remember them, but... Um, I will I'll reread it again for yeah. you, but, um, because I think it addresses your concern. Uh, denouncing xenophobia and discrimination against Asians, comma, and Asian Americans, or just Asians and Asian Americans, no right. comma. Right, uh, so as long as the anti-Asian is, is lifted out because it's too easy for the mind to pluck that, and of course that's the opposite of what it's about. That's how I often describe it when I'm not thinking, exactly. Right, yeah. I agree with you. So um, any other comments from the committee? I don't see any. Um, so um, the sponsors have heard a couple of, uh, uh, so let's start with the title. Any thoughts about that from the sponsors? Tracy has her hand up. Tracy, please. Oh, sure. Um, so I'll say that the language um, for the title, I had just kept the language that Northampton used in their city council resolution, but I agree with uh, Mr. Steinberg's comments and as well as with Ms. Pam said. Um, I think I went back actually, as we were talking today, I went to what the US Senate resolution said. And that resolution just says, resolution condemning all forms of anti-Asian sentiment. But it could just, you know, you could just, I mean, if we wanted to simplify it. Um, I agree with the concern about it, like discrimination, anti-Asian, and so on, if we wanted to tighten it up. And I agree with all the Scrivener's suggestions, so. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm good with all that. I'm sorry? I'm good with all of this. I think that's fine. Okay. Um, I would like to remove footnotes from resolutions. Is that okay? And that's both for the committee and to the sponsors. I'm not, we usually don't have footnotes in our resolutions and I'm, I'm not sure that it's appropriate, but I'm happy to be overruled. Uh, but that would, my instinct would be uh, to just drop the footnote and just have the, the sentence stand. Um, and that from the committee, Lynn? Yeah, I think you need to then add something into the statement that recognizes the Asian Pacific Policy and Planning Council. Okay. I, I see Darcy raised her hand and I was actually going to ask her, didn't our pollinator resolution have footnotes? It, it had a ton of footnotes. Okay. And um, okay. uh, I think, I'm guessing the reason that this footnote is here is because um, we wanted the, 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 um, the, writers, the writers, the authors, Tracy and Franklin, wanted to make sure that um, there, was, there was authority for all the whereases. Good, because um, that was my, my comments really to my committee. And so Mandy makes an excellent point. Um, this is not unique, this is not a first time. So the answer I think is simple. We don't object to footnotes in our um, resolutions, provided that they're appropriate. And this one seems quite appropriate. Any other thoughts on that? Do you have anything more? Well, and I think too, um, just the reason I th the, to have the footnote including when it was accessed is like those numbers of the incidents continue to rise, right? So uh -huh. it's just really reflecting one point in time when somebody looked at the database and said, oh, this is how many there are now. If I went there again today, I'm sure I'd see more, so. Exactly. Good. 
anyone else on that or any other? I've got one or two things I want to raise quickly, but um, anyone else? We'll just speak up because I'm seeing oh, such sorry. a. Mandy. George, Tracy's point asked, has a question. That, that access is a month old. Um, if we're declaring it now, would we want to potentially today have Tracy or someone access it again and update the numbers? Yes. That, if they're willing to do that, that would be fine. Uh, and then and that, just so that it's closer to that when up. the council adopts it. And that means access, that means changing the date on the uh, footnote. Yes. Right. And if Tracy sends that number to me directly, I can, I will make those changes because I will be the one who will send this to the clerk of the council with the various changes that we agreed to. So Tracy, if you're willing to do that, I'd be happy to make that change before it gets submitted to the council. I think it would also require a change of in the first six weeks since the March 19 to update to however many weeks it's been. <laughs> um, right, oh yeah. <laughs> I, want, I want to go back to my suggestion that we could just cite the organization with the date up here, update the numbers, and then get rid of the footnote. Thoughts on that? I think Tracy's uh, reasoning seems right on for me that people <laughs> might need to check in and see what cur the current figures are and that they're changing. Uh, okay. Anyone else have thoughts on that, whether they would uh, refer to uh, the text? Or well, the we could, um, to Mandy Jo's point, you could take out in the first six weeks a number and then um, we could just say since the March 19th launch and not include in the first six weeks because that's more yeah. language. It's always going to be updating. <laughs> yes, so. exactly. Right. It's not going to stop. So since Mar March 19, 2020 launch of the Stop right. Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders Hate Online Reporting System, comma, okay, yeah. and then you'll change that number. Yeah. I, mean, um, I was just looking at so. You, you might be able to answer that right now. That's true. Yeah, I was just trying, but it's. Um, All right. we, we're going to yeah. spend. Uh, Actually, um, they say it's. There was a press release last week, and they said there were close to 1,900 incidents. Okay. So. Um, and did they did they update the estimated 90 percent? Um, and that it said. I'm sorry. I'm on the phone. Um, and um, let's see, it said that, what did it say, 90%? Um, I'm just looking to see. No, get out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm arguing with my child. This is a cha the challenges of children being out of school. Okay, so um, uh, it doesn't say specifically about the 90%. But it says that, you know, 70% of the incidents were verbal harassment, 8% um, were physical assaults, 5% uh, were civil rights violations, 3% were being barred from establishments, and, uh, and there were 40% that weren't yeah. physicals. But um, it yeah. doesn't say specifically to that point, but. So the argument is having the link would allow someone, if they wished, to right. um, explore it themselves. And I think all we would need from you uh, is what, I, I like the idea of dropping in the first six weeks and just begin since. Um, and then whether you want to change that number or add some other uh, slight change of text um, is the only question. And then, Yeah, I mean, so the chat, yeah, so, um, so George, so the challenge is just, so what this, the press release from last week says that as of May 13th, there were 1,900 incidents reported. So change that to 1,900. But it's only for like two weeks. So, I mean, you could just say, mm -hmm. the date on here is a May 13th number, May 13th. Because even though the press release is June, it's actually put reporting the incidents to May. Okay. So it said, you know, close to, it says nearly 1,900 incidents. So we could write nearly, that would be yeah. nearly 1,900 incidents of racial harassment 
Um, anything else, again, I'm just asking, anything else you would like to change? Because right now all I'm changing is dropping the first, in the first six weeks, deleting that. Right. Keeping March 19, 2020 launch and, is changing and to that, 1900. Go ahead. Right. And then with the footnote, it would just, you can have that link in it. You could just say in the parentheses as of May 13th. And, and drop the access or just as of yeah. May 13th. Yeah. Right. Just, because they're reporting back, like they're tabulating okay. the data. So, so there's a little May bit of a lag. 2020 would replace access. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. That's George, fine. that leaves me concerned. I mean, I, I'm a stickler for footnoting, so yes. and, and attribution. So, but it leaves me concerned then about the second say the second piece uh, because oh. of the percentage there not being repeated in the in the uh, May 13th report. Um, I mean, uh, we do you want to take that phrase out. I don't or, hate to do that, but because uh, it's a very powerful phrase. Um, I, I mean, or we could just have some of these other statistics that are being reported that, you know, that 69% are verbal harassment and 8% are physical assault mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. I could wordsmith some language on that. Okay. I mean, I can also, um, after the meeting, I can also look at the, um, at the website a little more thoroughly and at the database itself and not the press releases and see like how, if they're repeating that number. I think that'd be more cool. else. Yeah, okay, well, I, just, I, I won't do that on the fly right now, but. Um, That's fine. If the committee is comfortable with, um, and it sounds like it is, A, keeping the footnote, um, and then you would like the access date in the footnote, is that what you're saying? Whatever well, I think it should say as of May 13th, but I can, I'll, I'll, I'll just look at the, um, I'll look at the website and just see how else the data is shown. Okay. And, and whatever the statement is in that paragraph should be consistent with and the what's reporting. Fine. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, from our committee, Pat DeAngelis has a, her hand up. Yeah, Pat, please. Uh, yes, I just want to uh, reiterate uh, the fact that um, um, it is, would be very important to put the kinds of incidents they are in here, physical assault, et cetera. Uh, when they were read, uh, it kind of punched me in the stomach, and I think it's an important um, piece that should be in here. Good. So you'd like to see that included if Tracy is, wants to do that. You're to do that. Okay. okay. And then two of the other sponsors have their hand up, uh, Dorothy Pam and Brooke Darcy. Darcy, please. Yeah, um, I am just uh, uh, process wise. Is this something that you and Tracy can just do um, if if the committee votes on it today? Um, and then is it is is this something that we're thinking is going to be on the council agenda on the 29th? Uh, if, if it's ready, yes. <laughs> Yes, yeah, I think there's a desire to get this to the council as quickly as possible. Um, it's really up to the committee. I think in the past, we are generally comfortable with these kinds of minor changes as long as the document's been looked at thoroughly. Um, but that's up to the committee. If people are concerned about the wording of this uh, and want it to come back, then we'd have to wait two weeks. Yeah, it just, would, it just seems like it's very, very timely with all the Black Lives Matter stuff that's going no, I, on. I agree 100 percent but I, I need to hear from my committee. Um, As a committee uh, member I'll weigh in George. Please. I'll, I'll weigh in and say if George and Tracy work together with the language and, and George is fine I would be fine with it going directly to the council from there and we can craft a motion for that to be the case. I agree with that. I agree. Yes. And uh, Dor Dorothy has her hand up as well. Dorothy please. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. I, I'm really sorry. I didn't really get a chance to go over this till last night, but there's a very important sentence which is lacking here. Um, this acts as if this anti-Asian and anti-Asian American discrimination is a direct result of the coronavirus uh, epidemic, but anti-Asian and discrimination has been part of American history from the yep. beginning. My grandfather told me of cases out there, is it my cowboy grandfather, 
um, you know, very beginning part of this 20th century. So here's a sentence I just started to put together. Uh, Whereas there has been a long standing history of discrimination and harassment of Asian and Asian American um, Americans, um, let's see, what is the word? I can't even read my words here. Discrimination, recent events have um, increased that. I, I just think that the recent situation should be put within, um, we have to put it within the history that this, this is not something brand new. There has been a lot of, of, of this type of discrimination for hundreds of years. Well, you could take, again, this is getting us into the weeds. Uh, point is my thinking. Um, you could take the whereas, the very first whereas, which makes the connection with COVID, and you could insert um, the use of anti-Asian terminology and rhetoric related to COVID-19, such as the Chinese virus and Wuhan virus, have what exacerbated or increased? That's good. Um, long-standing. Long-standing. Keep going. Long-standing history of or long-standing um, history of insert. discrimination and harassment. Yep. Uh, long-standing discrimination and harassment of Asians and Asian Americans. Right. And it's, I'm, I'm glad that that that, this, that both are put in there because, of course, and the, they, they were they were not Asian Americans. They were Asians in the beginning. Okay. Um, yeah, they weren't allowed to be citizens. Nope. Well. No, they weren't allowed to be. And, um, you know, if you, if you wanted to, you'd add a sentence about helped build America, okay? Okay, so here the thought is that this connection, um, the, the, the thought Dorothy's yeah. making is that this connection with COVID-19 should be right from the get-go connected to a, the larger issue of discrimination against Asians and Asian Americans. And that connection can be made in the very first whereas clause. Yeah. Um, by inserting after Wuhan virus, um, or and then the phrase would be, and you're going to have to read it for me slowly. Let me just hear it, and then we'll we'll talk about it. Okay. Good. Thank you. Well, Dorothy, I'm going to ask you to help me. Um, so, oh. Chinese virus, comma, and Wuhan virus have. So what what goes? A long-standing. Um, okay are part of a long-standing history of discrimination and harassment of Asians and Asian Americans. Um, recent, effort, recent events have just um, exacerbated this. Okay. Well, um, people can weigh in either. Yeah, um, weigh what in. I'm suggesting is after, with the, just keep the sentence as much as we can as the sponsors wrote it but insert yes. a clause after Wuhan virus um, that, in other words, these events, COVID-19 events have, what, increased, have exacerbated the longstanding, and at that point you could insert your clause. That's what I'm suggesting. Okay, that's good, that's good. Um, have, again, I'm, the sponsors can weigh in, have exacerbated, that too, have yes. exacerbated the longstanding, I think so, because it's pretty long-standing. Keep going, long-standing history, history of, yeah. uh, of discrimination and harassment. Okay. Of Asians and Asian Americans, period. Just period. Asian, and Asians, Amer and Asian Americans, yes. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Semicolon and and. <laughs> okay. I didn't hear you. Starting to sound like Mandy Joe. Rubbing <laughs> off on all of us. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, I got it. I, I, by the way, totally support the insertion of this. Okay. I just want to read it one last time. I want to make sure people hear it. And if there's any changes or problems, speak up. And then I would like to go to a vote. Um, unless people have anything else they'd like to insert. So this first whereas would read, whereas comma, the use of anti-Asian terminology and rhetoric related to COVID-19, such as the Chinese virus quote and the Wuhan virus quote, have exacerbated the long-standing history of discrimination and bias. Is that right? Am I missing? I'm trying to read I had, I had harassment. Oh, and harassment. Kind of Thank like you. History. That's right. Yep. Reading my lousy handwriting. Discrimination, of, uh, discrimination and harassment of Asians and Asian Americans, semicolon okay. and. Okay, good. Tracy has her hand up. Tracy, please. Um, yeah, for just um, for that longer clause where we were talking about the website and the data. Thank you. Um, while we were talking, I went there and 
the so you know since the March 19th launch so there were as of the May 13th report there were 1,843 incidents mm -hmm. um, that estimated 90% still say that it was related to the race. Mm -hmm. um, and to the point that was brought up earlier about adding some of the details, um, these incidents, I don't know how to make, how if we want the wearers to get much longer, but 69% um, of the incidents were verbal harassment and 8% were physical assault. Okay. If we want to add those details. Okay. And that way, George and I don't have to meet after. Fine. If you trust me to insert this, to 69% were verbal, uh, what was the phrase, verbal? Harassment. Verbal okay. harassment like and 8% physical assault. Physical assault. Okay. And, and I also just. Go ahead. Oh, no, once you've got that part. And the number up above, George, 1710. It changed. Now 1843. 43. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Footnote stays. And what happens to the access again? Is that as of May 13, 2020? Yeah, it's the it's as of May 13th because that's the date of the reporting okay. that was reported in June. And what we're quoting now from that site is accurate, is what uh, yep. meant mm -hmm. asked us to do. From that report. Thank you. Okay. May 13th? Yes. Okay. Okay. It's a May 13th report that was tabulated as of June. Oh, and then you access the 18th. I got that. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. And I also just want to mention that um, Shalini is also a sponsor and she's on the call. She's been quiet, yeah. but um, if she had anything to add Absolutely. and uh, she came in after we, I had sent it to Darcy, she added herself as a co-sponsor, which we greatly appreciate. Thank you. So I just want to make sure that we get this right. It's Darcy, Darcy, and Shalini, who are sponsors? Right. Yes. Thank you. Uh, on the council. And then Tracy and Franklin. Uh, Franklin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I just want to, if I may, I just want to, as a, I'm an historian by training. And so I appreciate it. I, I thought I would um, suggest that. But hesitating because I want to complicate the issue. But I think the, adding the phrase about the longstanding um, discrimination and harassment uh, uh, is very important. And I appreciate that very much, Tori. Good. You're you getting a, uh, a first person lesson in what we do, which, um, <laughs> and that's why we really value having the sponsors present. Um, it makes a difference. I have a question before we're going to come to a vote. Um, let me, one last time, any other comments and or changes? I don't see any hands and I don't see any, hear any voices. So um, I want to raise this quickly and then uh, maybe we'll come back to it later in the meeting. Um, we have this with the pollinator resolution. We are, as a, a council, we're trying obviously for good reason to shorten our meetings. And so often resolutions are appearing now as part of the consent agenda. And when they are put on the consent agenda and are passed, um, the normal public sort of expression and so forth is, is not, does not happen. And uh, I felt that and part of this can be addressed by the chair by producing perhaps slightly more detailed reports of the conversation that at least there's a written record of what was said um, I tend to simply say we passed it and here was the vote. Um, so that's on me. But I'm also thinking, and I don't know what my other counselors and, and committee members think, that uh, there is also a place for the sort of public at the council meeting itself, in spite of the d tremendous amount of time <laughs> demands right. that we're facing, that these get an, a public expression. And when they're just on the consent agenda, um, it's, it's just, it's done and it's official and it gets sent, which is great. But there is no uh, opportunity, for instance, I would invite uh, Franklin and Tracy to come to a council meeting when this is going to be presented. And so that's something that's in the back of my mind I'm a little concerned about. Um, our desire to shorten our meetings is a very important one. On the other hand, with resolutions like this, I think there's a place for a kind of, you know, at the actual council meeting for some kind of public expression. Um, right on, George. So, George. Yeah. Uh, what? The, since on the new order of the agenda, proclamations yep. come before the consent, 
yeah. we could have a the sponsors uh, speak to the resolution. Uh, we have not been reading resolutions recently, but they could right. speak to it. Yeah. And then it would move on to the consent agenda and then that allows for both accomplishments, if you will. Right. George? Please, Mandy. So I, I'm sorry to correct you, Lynn, but consent agenda is before proclamations now. <laughs> oh, because but, of the I'll move this the the off, I can move proclamations um, up the but, but what I was going to say is our consent agenda rule specifically allows for minor comments between the motion for consent agenda and the vote on consent agenda. So we could use that portion of the rule to make sure the sponsor highlights and maybe reads some of the now therefore, you know, particularly the call on public officials to condemn and announce um, and or, you know, pick some of, we don't have to read this, ship it off to maybe the president and all, but pick some of the specific resolved clauses to read before we actually vote on it just to highlight it. Mandy Jo, I'm going to suggest that instead I put proclamation. I, as president, can move proclamations before consent. I think the consent agenda is confusing enough for people. I'd rather do the rearrangement of the agenda for this purpose uh, for this meeting. Good. Hey, I, I, I hate to complicate. I know you've been trying, we've all been trying to shorten our meetings because for those of you who are interested in this sort of thing, it was five hours on Monday. Um, and some of us had a few hours earlier today. So it was quite a day. Um, but I think it's important that these uh, kinds of statements get some kind of, and I'd also like the sponsors to be invited to be present. Um, it happens at the very beginning of the meeting. And if there's an opportunity, if it's appropriate for them to say something. Um, I've certainly found that to be very meaningful when we used to meet face to face. Um, having someone come in and just briefly speak about um, the, the proclamation or resolution. Um, and so I think if we can continue to allow that to happen. I would like to see that. Um, so you have, um, Andy Steinberg on the committee would like to speak. Then Andy, please. And Tracy. Andy. I, I uh, great appreciation of uh, people who have brought this to us. Um, and but we did have a six hour meeting the other night and June 29th is gonna be another long meeting. Um, it is the night that the um, fiscal year 21 budget is being presented to us. I think that we're gonna have substantial potential discussion about it because um, as Northampton had, there could be discussion about the um, police budget uh, there, it, it is, uh, I think that it'd be a great mistake to let this get longer than necessary. I don't think that reading the resolution is helpful, um, but the, uh, the other possibility is in the public comment period to have two or three different statements as to why this is an important issue, it gets it out at the beginning, it gives it, uh, in, uh, it, it sort of sets it up with the public comment period. Okay. But I really don't want the resolution read and the time taken because I don't want another six hour night. On the committee, uh, Pat DeAngelis has her hand up. Pat, please. Uh, yes, I feel uh, I'm in agreement with George that the resolution or portions of the resolution need to be read as someone who's presented resolutions and proclamations that have not been read. Uh, it's been very disappointing. Our work is to make sure our community is whole and healed when, when there are disruptions. And making a public statement is critical because most people in town will not know anything about this unless we do. Uh, and that's as important as the budget. Um, uh, I'm Andy trying to has do another comment. Oh, I'm sorry, Andy. Andy from the committee has another comment. No, I didn't. I meant to lower hand. Okay, okay. Uh, and we're back up to Darcy. Darcy, please. Yeah, I, I just have to, uh, you know, I think that the consent agenda is good in a lot of ways, but, but um, I think 
uh, some of the resolutions that we have in town are really our connection to the people in town. And I, at the last meeting, I'll have to say, I felt, um, uh, you know, I, I had a lot of struggle about what to do about the pollinary, poll pollinator mm -hmm. resolution. And um, I ended up feeling uh, bad about the fact that there was neither public comment nor a reading of it because I think it was a really important resolution right, right. and I so I feel like reading part of a resolution at least if not all is actually important um, so I, I hope that we do that I mean the the next best thing would be to do public comment like Andy said but right that um, would be an opportunity and I think also inviting the, uh, well, we'll talk about this in a moment. Uh, Shalini? Yeah, I, I really uh, agree with Pat and um, Darcy's comment that we need to have space for this, especially this topic being so relevant and urgent. Um, I think this is what demonstrates to people that it's not just a resolution we're passing, but we're making time for it. So, and, and also it's then, it lets residents know that we are serious, we are all declaring this and it's our commitment. So we are taking our time, time to um, make this statement. I also want to obviously appreciate again the service for taking this initiative and encourage you to continue to let people know that they can approach us individually as town councilors or as the whole council to bring these things to our attention and take these initiatives. And also I wanted to thank the committee. Now I get to see what the GO does. It's a lot of work. So, wow, thank you. Thank you. Um, Dorothy. Hello, I want to agree with those who say that there should be some public time, not in the public comment, but officially on the agenda. And I believe it can be done very briefly. Um, introducing the two main sponsors and have each one of them say one of the main sentences from the resolution. I do agree with Andy that reading the whole resolution um, might take up more time than we have, but I think it's important to introduce the two faces from the community and to have each of them say one thing about the resolution. Um, and we do hope, of course, that there will be some press coverage of this because um, a resolution that uh, drops into the desert air and is never seen again is not a very effective resolution. So we have to give them an opportunity to show that two people from the community have come forward with this resolution and we have agreed with it. Tracy. Um, I, so I sometimes tune into the town council meetings, sometimes not the whole meeting sometimes, but I understand how long and the uh, agendas are these days and um, how many important issues you're dealing with. I mean, I have spoken to a number of members of the community who feel strongly about this resolution, who, you know, have been discriminated against or harassed. And I mean, they would very much, you know, be willing or even welcome the opportunity to speak about it. Um, I, I think there is a challenge that if, when the agenda is so full, or if a resolution is pa passed, you know, without any discussion or anything, like where does it go? Um, I mean, one route, I mean, I'm very flexible about, you know, if I speak at the council meeting or not. Um, I mean, one thing I was thinking about as this discussion was going on is, you know, even having a like a press release or a statement released after um, just about it, um, maybe to get more attention to it that way in a little press. And that could even be an opportunity too for some people um, who would have liked to comment on the public comment to make their viewpoints known or something. But um, it is, I think it is helpful if it's not just, you know, on a consent agenda and just like gets voted on with no discussion. So, Thank you. but I understand that balance about everybody's time because you're putting yeah. in a lot of hours counselors. So. Right. Well, I, I, I'm, I, I'm glad I mentioned it, but I also regret mentioning it because obviously it's taken up a good part of our time, but I think it's an important issue. And our, our council president is here. It's a member of the committee. She certainly hears what's being said. Uh, Andy raises a good point as well. Um, we're not gonna resolve it here. It, it's something I wanted to be raised. It's been raised. Um, 
I do hope that at some point I, I or someone from the council will reach out to Tracy and to Franklin and invite them to be present, at least in the early part of the council meeting for public comment and or some kind of, uh, and I hope that this would be something we do regularly, but it's something we have to discuss, I think, as a council. Um, any other thoughts? Um, let and, me just say, I appreciate the various comments back and forth. I will, as I look at the full agenda, try to come up with the best way, and I will be back in touch with all three of the council sponsors, and I need to make sure that I have Franklin and Tracy's emails to be in touch with them regarding timing. Good. I can get that to you, Lynn. Thank you. Um, Andy. Yeah, my additional comment is very quick, but um, I appreciate all that's being said. If we, if the goal is to make the community aware of this, um, the, uh, meet, our meetings may not be the best way. It may be the best way to put it on our web page right at the top for a period of the town web page where we have uh, news leader pieces and make it a news item that mm -hmm. the council has passed that resolution. Good. Thank you, Andy. Andy Jo has her hand up. Andy, please. Uh, I was just, just going to make a motion, if I may. Um, <laughs> I, I, you're going to all kill me, and I, I, I'm, I don't blame you. And maybe I'll be thrown off as chair, um, which I, you know, I could live with Wishful that. Wishful thinking. I know. Well, I don't know. We have anyway. I do have an issue. I'm afraid with the very first now. Therefore, be it resolved. I apologize. Um, we need to go back to it for a second, if we can. Um, it, I had a question mark in my margin, and I missed it. Um, the idea of calling on all local public officials to do something. Are people, I, that just puzzled me, um, or am I missing something um, in terms of actionability and so forth? It, it, maybe it's just the, the language is, I'm just missing the point, but um, is it just a rhetorical, we're not actually going to follow through on this, it's just exhortation. Um, I think as a council, we can, we make it clear where we stand. Um, are we also calling on, I mean, who are all local public officials? Um, is that Bachelman? Um, is that is that the chief of police? Um, is that I mean we can speak for ourselves. Um, I just I I'm sorry I should have raised this earlier, but it it really did puzzle me. Um, any thoughts on that? Including there's no problem and let's move on. There's no problem. Let's move on. Okay, that's one vote. <laughs> I agree. That's two votes. Third vote. All right, good. We'll move on. Mandy? <laughs> I, I'm going to finally make the motion. I move to declare the resolution denouncing xenophobic, xenophobia and discrimination against Asians and Asian Americans uh, clear, consistent, and actionable as amended. Second. Is there a second? Yes. Andy seconds. All right, let's move to a vote. And um, I need to get my screen up here and it's not going to cooperate. Um, so, Pat. Yes. Uh, Lynn. Yes. Andy. Yes. Um, I'm sorry, there's Andy and there's Mandy. That was Andy. <laughs> we both voted. Okay. Yes. okay. We got both. <laughs> Andy. Yes. <laughs> And the chair is a yes. That is everyone, I believe. The vote is unanimous. Um, yeah, thanks. Who has your hand up? Thank Donnie. you. Donnie. <laughs> ah, okay, so there were two good ideas that came out today that we can publicize our commitment to this resolution uh, as a town council, as a leadership uh, on the website and press release. Is there anyone, do we know who's doing that? Like yeah, I, I usually talk to Brianna about okay. those kinds of things and often uh, Paul then includes them in his weekly meeting, which I believe is on Tuesdays with uh, Scott. Okay. So you can do it a couple of ways, but I'll talk with Brianna about that. Okay. Oh, great. And they might even come up with more yeah, ways mean, to... Yeah. That includes, so for instance, the information things that get pushed out to people that have asked for them, 
Sometimes she puts banners on the website um, and then a press release that also gets put out there. And so there's a number of ways. Brown is very creative about that. Yes. All right. Thank you, Lynn. Absolutely. Did you All want right. someone else to do it? Or are you you going to do no, it? No, I'm fine. You know. Thank you. It's putting the whole package of the, of the agenda together. And okay. Thank you so much. Okay, Shalini, thank you. Um, I see no one else's hands up. I want to thank our sponsors for, for coming. I'd like to thank our council members, uh, councilors who were also sponsors uh, for being present. Um, but I'm ready to move on to agenda item number three, um, the plastic bag ban bylaw. I need to go get it. All right. Hey, thank you. Yes, thank you all for yeah. coming. You're welcome to stay if you really if you really find fascinating. <laughs> work. Um, we, we like to have a public, as you notice, at the moment there are no attendees, so we're often very lonely here at you. Uh, <laughs> you guys do a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Franklin. Thank you. Thank you, Trey. All right. Okay. We know how to clear a room. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Just confirm that I have the right one, Darcy. Um, right, yes. Yes, the one that has the track changes in it. Yep. So, um, yeah, oops. Okay. In here. Um, uh, shall I start, George? Please, if you would. Um, Okay, uh, that was a long discussion of, that was a whole hour on the other, I, I was expecting 15 minutes. But um, anyway, uh, uh, I hope that you all got to look at in your packet at the article that came out recently about how the single use plastic bag being um, um, the withdrawal of it by the by the governor uh, is is being there are advocate advocacy organizations that are really pushing to have that reversed. So it occurred to me that there's a little bit more urgency about getting this um, um, this done. So I did um, go back and make further changes to the to the um, bylaw that we discussed the last time. But I ended up not incorporating all of the suggestions that the committee uh, had made because um, on further thought, I just wanted to talk to you about it more. Um, and um, so I just will go through it. I also, if you noticed, I don't know if you noticed, but if you scroll down, um, uh, this is a very long document. <laughs> it goes back, uh, uh, what is it, seven versions? Six versions, six versions. Going back to all the way, if you go all the way to the bottom, it's the, 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 the bylaw that was passed in 2016. Um, so um, when I looked at this in January, when the bylaw, the bylaw committee came up with its um, proposal, uh, the, the, we were comparing it to the original that they were amending. Well, I don't know. Actually, Pat, you would know this. Um, Probably not. Were you? Were, did you take the version that was presented by um, Bernie Kubiak and Bob Ritchie, or did you take the version? I don't remember. I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, so all of this was fairly confusing uh, to look at, you know, where we were coming from. But um, the 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 first committee, the the Bernie Kubiak Bob Ritchie committee, um, they really looked at it with a very light touch. And their main thing that they did was that they, if you if you look at the original, if you're all the way down at the bottom, 
Um, I'm, I'm looking at mine separately, so I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing there. Let's see. Uh, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom. That's where I am. Okay. Um, and you look at the findings. That was one of the problems that, um, that the original committee had with the bylaw and also the the committee that added in the counselors, the bylaw review committee. So if you look at the section that says findings, um, there was a, a problem with the fact that some of that was out of date, the, the facts that were listed in the findings. I see. Um, but the very last sentence of the findings said, the primary purpose of this bylaw is to reduce the negative effects on single-use plastic bags on the environment, reduce contamination of plastic bags and residential recycling streams, and most importantly, to encourage consumers to bring reusable bags while shopping, eliminating the environmental impacts of any single-use bags. Well, the committee with Bernie Kubiak and Bob Ritchie saw that one sentence, they pulled it out, and they made it into the purpose. Um, and they, uh, they, they kept the findings also, but they took the, per they saw that the findings actually expressed the purpose and they put it into, an, they replaced the purpose section with that one sentence, right. which, is, which is basically what I did. Right. Um, separately, by the way, I did the same thing they did but I did it, you know, we, we both came up with the same idea separately. Um, so the purpose uh, was taken out by the, the, bylaw, the, the official bylaw review committee. The second one. Yes, the second one. Um, and uh, I put that back in. I took out the findings because some of them were out of date. I, in retrospect, wish I had left some of those findings in because um, they were very valuable, but I won't go into that. Um, so the purpose, I think, is, um, is the most important part of the bylaw. And it is um, expressing the legislative intent the findings also expressed was a big expression of the original legislative intent. Um, and I think it's really important to respect that and to make sure that that businesses, either ones that are here or new ones that aren't, you know, maybe coming from a town that doesn't have a single use plastic bag ban, understand why they're being asked to do what this asks them to do. So I left the purpose in, which I don't think there was any problems with before. Um, um, but I also left in the, the definitions and the, the use regulations number three. We, and we had discussed uh, changing three so that it would become mandatory for retail establishments to make reusable bags available. And I actually uh, discussed that with the Zero Waste Amherst group, and they were pretty uniformly against the idea of doing that, um, which you would think, you would wonder, well, why? But it's because we don't want retail, we don't want all retail establishments to be mandated to carry reusable bags. That's, that's too many establishment and too many bags out there in the environment. I think probably all of you, if you're like me, I have like four times as many reusable bags as I need. <laughs> and so we don't need more of them being provided. And the establishments like the grocery stores and CVS, they already provide them. 
we don't need to require them to provide them. So um, I go back to, and I know this committee doesn't like including language that is not quote enforceable, but I think that in, in situations like this, um, where the purpose is already stated as being to encourage residents to use reusable bags, that we can have language that helps businesses figure out how they're going to do it, how they're going to transition. I mean, ideally, we want to get to a point like many countries in Europe are in where where the the stores don't even provide any bags they just assume customers will be coming with their own bags and they do um, but in the meantime they need guidance about what they can do pending that later period of time when everyone's all people are always going to bring reusable bags so they need to have figure be able to this gives them guidance the definitions gives them guidance about what they can do in the meantime if they think their customers need some kind of bag um, so i left that in because i want this committee to consider the possibility that you can have words of encouragement for residents to do a particular thing. Um, you might, you know, like later on, we may have a bylaw that that bans single-use plastic containers. Well, we would we might want to also have some kind of guidance in that bylaw as to help businesses figure out what they can do in the meantime. And there, you know, there are other things like the carbon tax or something like that. Not that we're going to do that in Amherst, but that, you know, the purpose of that is to get people to use less gas, um, buy smaller cars or do whatever they need so they don't have to pay so much for their gas. So it's not, um, I think we have to, we don't want to be putting in language that's so aspirational that we're looking way, way into the future. We're looking at how we want people to, to be changing their behavior now. Um, so that's why I left that in. And I did take out the section on deferments because I, I understood, I heard the committee saying that that makes, made sense to do at this point when it was passed uh, almost five years ago. So, um, that is basically what my thinking was. And, um, you know, I do think that um, we've all put a lot of time into talking and thinking about this. <laughs> I'm hoping that you will just, uh, you know, bend a little bit and allow this, these words of encouragement and guidance for business to stay in here because it was you know, it kind of honors the original uh, authors and it, it helps businesses figure out how to, how to handle this bag ban. Yes, that's basically okay. my pitch. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. I see Pat's hand raised. Uh, yes. Um, I'm concerned uh, deferments were was eliminated, but it may need to be either returned or an emergency section be added to this bylaw since we're in a pandemic where people are purposefully asked not to bring their own bags um, to stores and that we are using plastic bags as a way of keeping people's um, contamination levels, possibly keeping them low. So I, I feel like I could I really don't think we can have deferments out or we or there needs to be a new section about emergencies. Okay. Other thoughts, comments from the committee on the bylaw, either on deferments or any of the other changes or non-changes that have been made. 
Mandy, please. I, I thank you, Darcy, for explaining why uh, Section C, the addition to Section C, you guys decided not to change because I know that was a suggestion we had made that might have allowed me to vote that this proposed amendment is actionable. Um, and so now I, uh, I, I understand why that change wasn't made, um, but I still stand um, with the position that bylaws are not meant for guidance unless you're going to fine institute some sort of penalty. Um, bylaws are for enforcement, whether that be criminal or non-criminal, that's why we institute a bylaw. If we're not going to put in, an enforcement mechanism in there for something, then the bylaw is not an appropriate method for instituting something in a, in a general sense like this. So I, I can't support the addition of, I guess, everything in B and then the C because everything in B relates to the addition in C when there's no enforcement of that and it's not mandatory, it's just guidance. That's where I see the purpose being. You know, you can, you know, with, even without C, that's the purpose of this and, and B, you know, even without the addition to C, the, the, all, the things already in C that the plastic bags are banned does encourage people to bring because they might not like the other bag options or they might be charged for the other bag options. Um, Cause even without C saying you can't, th number three saying you can, some stores did that. Um, so, you know, I, I, I just can't declare those sections added to B and now C um, actionable. Okay, Andy. Yeah, I have slightly different view on what Mandy just said, though I understand it totally. Um, Darcy makes a very good point that three uh, really does say something important to the community and to people reading the regulation, uh, the whole thing to make it understandable. And I would like to make sure that that sentence that is C3 is in there some point uh, for that reason. Uh, the other thing that I had thought about was getting back to um, C2. And I think that the problem with that is, is that it's not something we're regulating. It really is part of the definition of thin use single plastic bag. So uh, because a thin use single plastic bag is defined as something particular. And when you get down to um, CA, that's the core of the whole, um, what we're banning. We're banning thin, thin use single plastic bags. So um, then taking a section of C2 where it says, but this kind of thin use plastic bag is okay, really belongs in the definition. So that's, uh, so I guess my, my thought was take C2, put it in the definition, and take um, and find a place for C3, even if it's not under the use regulation section, but it ought to be in the, in the bylaw. Okay. All right. Other, yeah, I'm I, sorry. I, uh, yeah, I wonder whether or not um, Andy's suggestion means would that sentence might be integrated into the purpose somehow? The customers are encouraged to bring somehow integrated into the purpose statement. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, it, it, I mean, the third part of the purpose statement is to encourage customers, consumers to bring reusable bags while shopping, eliminating the environmental impacts of any single use bags. Bag. Exactly. Right. Right. And there is there anything else in C3 that should also be added above? So if you struck that first sentence and then continued, retail established may provide, would that, should that be integrated up above or not? 
That's what I would suggest so that we yeah. can get rid of three under regulation. And then go with Andy's suggestion that two goes into definition. C2 goes into definitions. And C2 goes into definitions, All right. Under thin film, single use plastic bag. Good. Would, um, so that would be an exception. Yeah. Yes. So under that makes sense. go ahead. I'm just saying that makes sense. So, sorry. Lynn, do you want me to show my screen? Because I was for sure I'll stop sharing. I don't have a um word version. Oh yes, this is a word version. Yeah, it yeah. is. But oh I'm sorry. I yeah, why don't you are you I'll, I'll just share mine with the very good. Yeah. Thank you. You're Mandy. tracking the changes? Yes, you yeah. Is. There you go. Thank you. Do I need to give you permission? No. Nope. Okay. Okay. So I think I think we can see some of it here. I moved the second two sentences of C three up to the end of A. Yeah. Right. That's the green on my screen. Right. I just moved good all good. of the two to the end of. I mean, I, I think yeah, it's, it's end of that definition. Yeah. End of that definition, just in whole. Yeah. Um, it just says are permissible. Good. Um, and then I guess what I would have to do is delete the rest of this. Yeah. I don't think we need a one then. Could you make it a little larger, Mandy? Oh, sure. Sorry. There we go. So yeah, I moved the whole de number two C2 up to the end of the definition of thin film single use plastic bag. The green that you see in three three C three got moved up to, to purpose, um, and then I deleted the first sentence of three and two. And I think that means we wouldn't even need a one. That's correct. I think it would look like that then. And deferment. We haven't talked about deferments, so nothing's changed there. Um, yeah, exactly. I do have a question. And once we move that up, do we need these extra definitions? Because they're not part of any regulation, they're just part of a purpose and a thing. Can we just go with the, the typical? So you're saying they're not anywhere in the bylaw? They're no longer in the use regulations or enforcement. They're no, just so up in the purpose. If they're anywhere in the bylaw, I would keep them in. Yeah, there's no harm in keeping them in. And I think that they're helpful to businesses to, to see what the options are. Uh, hmm. Comments, thoughts? I mean, I just think it, I, I think it makes it more confusing because these definitions have nothing to do with what a thin film plastic bag is. Right. Um, and so someone's going to be looking at that and potentially trying to figure out what's allowed. Whereas, you know, I think many people have a general idea of what a biodegradable, reusable, compostable, or recyclable paper bag is. And since we're not enforcing, I guess my thoughts are we're not, there's nothing to enforce. Like if there was a, a use regulation that said people must use compostable bag, then we would need an actual definition of compostable bag. So a board of health person could go in and say that one's not compostable under the definition, but that's not what we're enforcing at all. So we don't really need those specific definitions. We can go with people's general knowledge. Yeah. I'm sorry. My problem is without looking at the entire thing, and this just comes from my experience of working on the zero energy bylaw, if it's referred to anywhere in the bylaw, I think it's best to have it in the definitions. And But I, I'm not looking at the whole bylaw. So the only place those words are recyclable, compostable, biodegradable, and the standard, well, the standard is, is 
only used in the definitions. Um, everything else is just up here, right? And we already had in the purpose reusable was already in there. I, I, may I speak? Mm -hmm. uh, Darcy, go ahead, please. Um, uh, I guess I just feel like it is a service to businesses to have them know exactly uh, the types of bags that might be allowable. Say, say a state law passed and they had put a lot of money into what one of those kinds of bags. You know, it it may make a difference if they are ha if they have the exact type of bag that is allowable. Um, like I said, this just guidance for businesses. That's all because they, you know, not everybody will be bringing reusable bags, and they have to figure out what they're going to do, and what is, um, you know, it it probably is confusing to them, but. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this as like in five years, we can take out these definitions because hopefully there'll be enough of a transition of people using reusable bags. We don't, we won't need this and all of our current businesses will already know what they're doing. Uh, presuming we don't have more COVID 19s coming down the road. Andy. Okay, so uh, two things. One is where, where we're at right now. Um, it could be handled in some fashion like this, uh, where you get down to uh, defining thin film single use plastic bag, which is what the core of this whole thing is, getting in there also a thin film single use plastic bag is not biodegradable, compost compostable, or recyclable, but is typically a bag with plastic handles with a thickness of three mils, you know, going from getting that in. So that you use the biodegradable, compostable, and recyclable um, in the, the um, thin use definition and therefore it is used. And of course the ASTM gets used in one of the, is, gets used to define compostable. So it all, come, it all comes together in the definition of the, what you, you are banning. And the other thing that I wanted to get back to was um, the concern that Pat had raised at the um, end about having that one section of uh, deferments. Uh, we don't really need that because this whole, you're bringing up, I think, an example um, of the governor having said, we're temporarily um, suspending this. And um, he overrode all local regulations. Um, and I hope that that never happens again. Um, this is not about making something deferrable. It's about making something enforceable and happen. Uh, and uh, which gets into an entirely different subject unrelated to this. And that is somebody ought to be suggesting that um, as a council, uh, we consider writing a letter to the governor saying, it's time to uh, re allow us to reinforce our, uh, to start enforcing our plastic bag ban again. No, I don't agree with that. <laughs> and you know I care about the environment. I don't agree because the people in the stores who are working with the bags, et cetera, um, are in much more danger of contracting COVID the longer they're in the store and the more they're doing. It's pretty safe for you and I to go in, but if they have to handle my, my cloth bags 
and everything else, we're putting them in danger. And I think that's inappropriate. Sorry, um, I interrupted. I'm all right. Um, Darcy, have your hand up. I just, I just feel like that <laughs> that needs a response is uh, that, that using plastic bags is by no means the only alternative uh, to reusable bags. You know, there are plenty of other types of bags that could be used that are in this list right here. So uh, that's why it would make sense to join with these advocacy agencies to say we need to, to um, lift the ban on bans <laughs> um, because it wasn't necessary. It is necessary. There's just alternatives to using. We're, we're getting away from this, but I, yeah. I would just say when, when we started and I couldn't bring my reusable bags, I was able to use recyclable paper bags at Stop and Shop and then they stopped stocking them which forced me to use the plastic bag. So I think that goes to Darcy's point where you can still require, you can still enforce a plastic bag ban during COVID without, while also banning the use of reusable bags or customers bringing their own bags. I think that's what she's going to, which would also still ensure that um, the, the employees remain safe because they are only touching brand new bags. But anyway, I added a sentence down here at Andy's suggestion um, that we should probably look at. Let's look at it, yes. Um, I want to weigh in just briefly and then we'll go back and see what the rest of you think. Um, I'm kind of leaning towards Mandy's point that um, a bylaw has a specific uh, purpose and um, the, the definition should be keyed to what the bylaw is requiring people to do. And uh, this sentence telling us what thin film plastic bags are not, could actually, they're, they're not rocks, they're not, you know, I mean, you could, this list could go on for an eternity. I'm not sure what this really adds other than now makes the definitions relevant because now the terms are here and we need to define them. Um, so could people speak to um, some more bit about why they feel it's necessary to have all these other definitions in which then also forces us to have add the sentence that uh, has been added, telling us what a thin film plastic bag is not. George. Yep, Lynn, please. I, I'm just gonna go back and this is gonna come up again when we start looking at other bylaws that are on our list. Right. And that is, I would leave nothing to the population's imagination I would define it to the extent necessary and possible and understand that all bylaws have to be reviewed on a regular basis. But it's, uh, you will find when we get to uh, the zero energy bylaw, there's still one term that doesn't feel completely defined. Right. And we spent ages doing those. If it's Andy, bylaw, then it should be, and, and not totally understood, it should be defined. If it's not in the bylaw, then it doesn't need to be here. Okay. And I don't know whether ASTM D64000 standard is in the bylaw. It isn't. It isn't. It if isn't. it isn't, then take it out. The only place it appears is right here. Um, so, so I guess I go with George. This sentence I just added at Andy's thinking is not necessary to define thin film single use plastic bag. It, it doesn't help identify what a thin film single use plastic bag is because it's not even talking really about plastic bags at all. Whereas at least the sentence here is helping to define what a thin film single use plastic bag is because it could be those bags that people wrap their meat in from the meat counter or whatever could be thought of as potentially a single use plastic, thin film single use plastic bag. And this is saying, no, those are not what we're banning here. Um, so I think that sentence helps define what a thin film single use plastic bag is. But this sentence that's saying it's not a biodegradable bag, a compostable bag or a recyclable 
paper bag? Well, a recyclable paper bag from anyone's definition, because the word paper is in there, would never be thought of as a single use plastic, plastic bag. No. So paper, I'm it's not plastic. Let me make a suggestion quickly and see, because we do have some other major issues we have to address today, and we may just have to put this off again. I, I, I hate to say that, but let's just, I would just suggest um, delete this last sentence, move the thin film definition to the top. It should be highlighted. Delete ASTM, just take that out. And the top item would be thin film uh, with this last sentence removed. And then I would leave the others in um, in response to uh, uh, Lynn's concern, uh, biogradable bag, compostable bag, recyclable paper bag, reusable bag. Um, Mandy, I don't think they do any harm and they are, I guess your point is they're, they're nowhere mentioned except here? No, they are the mentioned. The only they're place mentioned. they're all, only because those words are used in the purpose, right? That's the, those words are used. Yeah, but since they're there, Lynn's argument is there should be some, it would be helpful to have a definition. Um, and, and Darcy's concern is that, I mean, I'm not really sure how many people use bylaws as a way to, uh, to inform themselves, but still um, it, it could be useful to uh, businesses, but the ATSM should be out because it's not in there at all. The others are mentioned. It's right still. here. I'm sorry. It's it's part uh, of it. Uh, it's uh, fine because it is yeah. used within the definition of compostable bag. Right. It could right. just be added to that. It could be just the second sentence of that definition. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, but I would put the thin use at the top because that's the one that matters, right? The I rest think, of it. I think that right? would be good. It wouldn't. In in alphabetical order, order, then. <laughs> yeah. and generally, the, the, I, I'm going to go to the Annie Steinberg rule of writing bylaws, since he was the one that helped us make sure that we wrote the zero energy bylaw to a good standard, and that is you keep these in alphabetical order. But I okay. do could take okay. the ASTM that's on top and put it at the end, the compostable thing, and get rid of the issue. All right. And take off the last sentence of the right ten years. Yeah, I think that's that okay. works. Uh, okay. Thank you, Manny, for doing this. By the way, I appreciate it. Um, this kind of thing is really helpful. Like that. Yeah. 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 Except do we get need rid to... of the little quote mark in front? Right. That's what I was wondering. Do we need to get rid of these quote marks? Yeah. Okay, so we are now at 12.05. Um, I think we've made, we've made a fairly good progress, but we have at least two major items we have to address. Um, one related to our task of, 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 of coming up with recommendations for the Finance Committee. The other is something that's come to our attention, uh, courtesy of the Council, related to town manager evaluations. Um, to say nothing else, of a few other things that we're just going to have to probably let slide. Um, we need to decide what we want to do with this. Are we in any, are we in the position to actually act on this today? Lynn? I would like to move that we recommend this to the town council. Okay, we have a motion. So I would object to a motion. We don't recommend, we declare things clear, right. consistent, and actionable. Thank you. No, right, that would be the motion would be. Um, and so the motion has been made to declare this bylaw as amended, um, clear, consistent, actionable. Is there a second? Second. So we have a motion that's been seconded. Um, discussion, further discussion. Um, because if we could put it up on the screen one last time. Um, Darcy, I'm not sure this is what you want. Um, and is, but uh, that sometimes does happen where, um, uh, no, I, I'm I'm fine with those changes. I, okay. I I think that I mean I wish that I had left the findings in, but I didn't. So that's that. Okay. Um, as far as the changes that have been made, um, I like the the changed purpose. I am glad to keep the you know to reorganize the definitions and keep them in for the most part. And um, yeah, I'm I'm fine with the changes. Are we take are we were the def the deferments are taken out? That is my understanding. Is yeah. that correct? 
the deferments are taken out. That's what it's presented here as. That's correct. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm fine. So don't worry about me. We have a motion that's been seconded. Any other comments or thoughts? Mandy Joe, your hand is up. Mandy Joe, please. Yeah. Um I I just thought for the record and for George's benefit for report writing to indicate why I will be voting no. Um, I I don't think keeping these definitions in makes this bylaw any clearer. You know, yeah. we've got a lot of definitions that people will, I, I believe, will be looking for um, in within the enforcement section and they're going to be wondering what what can I do with a compostable and I just don't think it makes it clear. Um, I think it's not as clear as it could be. I think, you know, I understand the desire to accommodate the sponsor and try to keep everything in with that. Mm -hmm. um, but we had some belief that we shouldn't have any items that are not enforceable in the bylaw. Um, mm -hmm. And I think in trying to accommodate ways to keep those items in while not making them enforceable, made the bylaw less clear. So I will be voting no on this motion. Okay, you feel that the bylaw is not as clear as it could be for those reasons? Yeah. Okay, any other thoughts from the committee? Then I'm prepared to move to a vote. Um, let's start with um, Mandy. Uh, no. Um, Lynn? Yes. Pat? Yes. Andy? Yes. There is a yes, so the vote is four in favor, one against um, the motion to declare this clear, consistent, and actionable is passed. Thank you, committee. Thank I will ship it off to the committee and Darcy. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you that. Much. Thanks for the work, Darcy. And by the way, the uh, town council meeting is adjourned. Ah. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you. Do you expect this to come up on the 29th? We will try, Darcy, to put it on the agenda. Um, it's. Uh, it would probably be on the consent agenda, right? Maybe. Maybe we can get away with it that way. It we'll can't be per our rules because there's a no vote. Oh, right. You're right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Right. So the answer is I'll, no. I'll see you on consent agenda. Okay. Right. All right. I'll see you later. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Dave. All right. We are on to item four, and it's only 1210, um, which is an update on our current uh, pursuit of uh, making a recommendation to, for finance. Um, I have received four SOIs. I haven't checked my email this morning because the deadline is today. Um, one candidate has not yet submitted an SOI. Um, they've all been given uh, three separate reminders um, in the course of the last week or so, um, and four have submitted. Um, if the fifth does submit today, what I'm prepared to do is then make those available to you. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute um, for you to read, obviously in advance of uh, the interviews but we have gotten four responses. Um, we need to talk about um, these SOIs uh, need to be sent to you, that I'll take care of, but um, they need to be posted to the meeting packet um, at the same time by June 24th, according to our, our process. That is something I will take care of. Um, it also says that I'm to it's to be there to be attached to the public meeting posting, and I was confused by that because I I'm stupid. Um, how are they How are they different? Um, I think they're just attached at the time of the posting. Okay, so, well, I'll, I'll get clarity on that. And it sounds like I have to know, do two Athena things. Athena will know what that. I'll what talk to that. Athena. All right, it's in the, it's in our process. Um, I just didn't think about it until now. Okay. Um, do we make these available to the town? I mean, I assume once they are publicly available, they're available to town council members in general. Should I send them yeah. to town council members as well? I mean, just directly, just send do, them to them? Does our process say to send them directly? I don't think it does. 
it and I would make... say they can access them through the public postings. Okay, so we'll just yeah. follow the process. Okay. So just um, wait a minute though, when you were with OCA, did they, when you went to publicly interviewing everybody, did you send them all to the council? I believe we did. I believe, in other words, There's, yeah. We've never had an SOI process at OCA yet. Oh, that's, no, right. that's I, right. You're right. That's great. Right. We we sent the CAFs, but not the SOI. Right, with the CAFs. Okay. Um, I yeah. Okay, good. I'm not going to do that. There'll be a week. Um, interviews, July one is next time we meet. Um, I've told everyone that the interviews will be July one. I've told everyone they'll be during the regular council meeting or during regular committee meeting, between ten uh, ten thirty and twelve thirty. Um, my thought was they would the interviews would be 15 minutes each and i would space them out 20 minutes 20 minutes 20 minutes um and so that would take us through at least the first hour of the next meeting and then the suggestion by lynn had been and we need to weigh in on this that we would then immediately go to deliberation and vote based on the fact that we've got the sois we've got the interviews um, we should just go ahead at that meeting and deliberate and vote is that the understanding of all the members of the committee? Um, I just have a question because yep. I, these these processes are going to get so confused in my head because CRC is working through the OCA process for planning board and CBA now. Right. Um, when we went to interviews for this process, right. did we say the inter we said the interviews would happen at that meeting, but did we say the recommendations would be voted at a different meeting? Because I know the OCA process yep. for the before that they'd be two separately posted meetings. Does our process say our they're process two separate says it at, at, at either at that meeting or a subsequent okay. meeting? So we then are, I'm okay with that. Yeah, okay. Our process <laughs> allows us to make the decision at the meeting um, okay. if we wish. And because OCA, I believe, would actually terminate the first meeting and then have another meeting the same night. Yeah. Is yeah. what right. But, that's we, what we chose do. in our process not to have to do that. Is there any reason, Mandy Jo, that we should? No, I just, because I, yesterday we dealt with at CRC, the OCA process and changes to that for planning board. I'm, I'm just getting them all confused in my head. And so I, I can't remember which one did which. All right. All right. If we follow this, what I'm suggesting, so interviews July 1, um, we would begin the meeting with interviews. Each person would be given a specific time when they would be uh, asked to be present. They're perfectly free to be present. If they, it's a public meeting, anyone can be present. Um, but I would tell them that, you know, you're going to be on at X time, Y time, Z time. No one has, in my initial outreach to them, no one has said, I can't do the interview at that time. Um, so I'm assuming that they're, they're okay with it. If they're not, our understanding is that it's not mandatory. Um, you know, so if they said, for instance, I, can, I can't make, uh, you know, 11.15, but I could make 12.30 <laughs> um, or, or 12.15. In other words, it's still within our meeting time. You're okay with that kind of flexibility or do you want me, um, what we told them is it takes place during our meeting. It's a two hour window. Um, I'm gonna ask people to come at the first hour and give them specific times and, okay and yes. try to be flexible as I can, but still allow us a chance to then actually have deliberation within that two hour window. Okay. Then if we do vote at that meeting, uh, I can then present a report with the recommendation to the council on July 13th. So the July 13th meeting of the council um, would then um, get our recommendation and they could then vote on that on July 13th. And then the term would begin um, August 1. This is a two-year term, is that correct? My yeah. Yeah, that's my understanding. So the term would be from August 1, 2020 to uh, what, to June 30th, uh, 2023. Is that right? No, yeah. 22. To June 2022. Right. Andy has his hand up and Mandy Andy Joe is having connection problems. Okay. Andy. Yeah, I was looking at our process statement again and I was uh, just to make sure I had it all in, clear in my head and I had a problem with one sentence. Okay. Uh, 
I can I can bring the process up. And where I'm talking about is at the very end of six, the last sentence of six. Yep. Um, uh, hold on. Is it on the screen? No. I can put. Do you want me to put mine on the screen? Um, I got it right here, Andy. I don't know what happened. There we go. Okay. Is it's the been, end of six interviews. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. Stop. Uh, so we get to the point where it says. Um, all candidates shall be invited through, um, though attendance is not mandatory. That's a good sentence. The next sentence, the failure to attend the interview shall not be a reason for disqualification. Do we really mean to say that? Because if somebody doesn't come, they may be disadvantaged by their not having been there. And it may be something that we consider the, um, that we give a little bit more weight to people we've heard from. And I, I just think that that was a deceptive sentence uh, and it's, it was an unnecessary sentence, given the one before where we say it's not mandatory. Mandy mm -hmm. goes back and she has her hand up. Mandy, please. Yeah, sorry about that. My internet must be flaky today. Um, I guess I would say yes to Andy, but you know, I think we wanted to make sure that if they didn't attend, they weren't, th that. so maybe the language could be changed because we were dealing with the OCA process that did sort of disqualify candidates if they didn't attend an interview. I think maybe what we want to say is the failure to attend the interview session shall not remove the candidate from the applicant pool or something. Um, what does this not mandatory mean? Doesn't that kind of... No, I mean, it is kind of redundant. I get it. Well, I think what the purpose was to assure the candidates that if they either simply do not want to go through the interview process or for some reason cannot meet the time that we've given them, that that by itself will not be used as a reason to disqualify them. That's the purpose of that sentence. It's my understanding. It was just, you know, you could have someone who, you know, we have the SOI, we have, right, we have the CAF for what it's worth, we have the SOI, and um, we may look at them and think this is a very strong candidate, but they were in Timbuktu um, and, and out of access to, you know, or they, just didn't uh, want to go through a public interview. They just didn't want to be interviewed in front of everybody else. Um, so the thought was that this sentence simply assures them that their decision not to uh, be present for an interview or their inability to be present for an interview will not by itself be a reason to disqualify them. That was the purpose of the sentence. And that's what it says. That's what I thought it said. And that's, and and it doesn't mean that. in our considerations, right. uh, we find out, you know, they were down the street, but just didn't show up. Um, it doesn't mean in our considerations that we can't think about that. It just means we can't disqualify them. Okay, right. I'll drop it. No, I wouldn't come back to it, but I think for the moment, I'd like to leave it. Um, that was my understanding is what the sentence meant. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll leave it. Okay. Um, so we are agreed that we will do interviews on July 1. We agreed that the interviews will be uh, hopefully 15, 15 minutes each um, and that I will moderate them. Um, everyone can ask a question and a follow up, so you do not have to ask a question if you do not want to. So, um, especially with the time limit in mind, if someone's already asked your question, or something close to it, I hope you will think of just not saying anything. But you are free to ask one and to ask a follow-up. Um, we also want to give a few moments to the um, candidate to ask questions of, of the committee and or of the finance committee person uh, present who happens to be a member of our committee in this case. So that's what I'm envisioning. And um, if there are any problems with this, I'll let you know by email, but, and I will let you know with the interview 
uh, times and schedule will be when I finally have it set. Um, anything else you want to know from me or need to know before July 1? You'll get the SOIs. Um, how soon would you like them? I could send them today, but when do you want the SOIs? Now would be great. Sooner, sooner or later. Okay, fine. So I will send them as, as hopefully later today. Again, I'm waiting on one, so I might wait until tomorrow morning, but no later than tomorrow morning, I would send you the SOIs. Um, and then I will later send you the uh, interview schedule or list. Um, and anything else that you need to know related to interviews. Okay. Um, we are going to, if I can find my agenda, we are going to um, go to item number nine, which is unanticipated, which is town manager evaluation and process. That's been sent to us by the council. Um, we need to really spend a few minutes. We don't have a lot of time and people need to weigh in as terms of their own schedule today. But Lynn, you sent us a number of documents. We need to, th to think for a few minutes at least how we want to proceed with this. It's important. I would strongly urge that this committee meet again before the next meeting. Yeah. Purpose because they've thrown, you know, the council's thrown this at you. Um, we're already behind the eight ball on the timeline. And over time, we do need to revise this process, but we aren't going to be able to do that substantially this year and meet the timeline. So I, without further perseverating, I would just suggest that we meet sometime between now and uh, the end of the day next Wednesday. We could, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna suggest Wednesday morning at our typical time if people are still available. Yeah, that works for me. I, I could do that. Andy, how do you, is that okay? Yes. Let me so, just say that by then, I would hope to be able to get you even better documents. Um, that basically, I spent more time yesterday trying to get ready for this committee than in refining docu documents and moving this forward. Having said that, I just want to say I'm glad this has come to a committee. Uh, I'm glad it's come to GOL because this is where I believe it belongs. And I think while we won't have as much opportunity this year to refine the process, it does put it in a place where some people can think about refining the process going forward. I, there are some refinements we can make this time. I also just want to mention to you, because I had already scheduled a, a Zoom meeting with um, the staff who support this effort in town hall, um, namely Brianna, who supports all of the notices on the web, all of and uh, Angela Mills, who sends out all of the uh, information to committees, committee chairs, commissions, and uh, and then also the HR, which of course is we're having a change. Uh, I met with um, both Evelyn and Joanne, who's interim, will be interim as of the end of the, as of the beginning of July. So I met with them on Tuesday morning at eight o'clock because I'm a glutton for punishment. Uh, and uh, after six hours of meeting, uh, and we had a very good discussion about the uh, documents, but particularly about what were there any ways that we could increase staff response. And the last email I sent you gives you a history of the various response levels um, of over the last four or five years that Angela, who's with us right now, compiled for me last year. And let me just say, short of a statistical sample or, which is very hard to do with a size our, our, of ours, size of our staff, or insisting that everybody you know, fill in a form or doesn't get paid, which is illegal, you're never gonna have a good staff response. It's never gonna be representative. And as much as people wanna hear, or at least some counselors wanna hear more from staff, the reality is what you're gonna hear is the staff who have a beef and the staff who wanna make sure they give the boss a boost. 
but you're never going to get a good response or sample unless you have a sampling process, which we don't have, or the other. So what the group discussed, which I thought was really, really useful, was the idea of uh, sending through town mail a, an envelope or a, I'm sorry, sending through town mail a the survey and an already pre-printed envelope with no coding to the same to the same thing, uh, same address, and it would just be dropped in in the envelope, and to see whether that could encourage increased responses. We've also did talk about uh, connecting with MMA to say see if they have any further suggestions on how to increase staff response. Um, and there might have been other ideas, and Angela actually may want to chime in. Uh, I'm open to anyone and all of those, but I really want to stress that regardless of what you do without a statistical sample and without demanding that everybody answer, you don't have a representative response from anybody. So it's okay. brutal uh, facts of, of research. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, I'm going yeah, to follow up on that really quickly because uh, having spent more years in town manager evaluations than most of the council because I did it on the select board all these years, it has been my experience that the even when we had larger numbers of responses in those years, they were not helpful to doing the evaluation for the reasons that Lynn has already stated. Um, it has been frustrating. I have continued over a long period of time to think about how we could get better staff input. It's just not happening, and it's not when it does happen. It doesn't usually happen in a useful way because you don't know what to make sense of uh, a complaint. There was times when um, I observed uh, that you were getting beefs like because it was around a union issue. And um, so that you could tell that one particular uh, unit of uh, government that employees were um, all putting in very similar comments and right. that it was a, a, a slanted purpose and it didn't end up being helpful for the purposes that we were going. The other thing that I just wanted to, it came out of the meeting the other night and I think was something that we do need to talk about and that is the form that we are presenting to our council to fill out in how to make it a, a, fill, a form that's useful for the council, um, both as to what is being asked and how they're being uh, asked to return it uh, because there were problems in both last year. So let me, I'd like to speak to that as well, but Pat, were you on the, Goals committee? No. Okay. And I don't think anybody else here was either, but the goals committee, when we set up the goals this year uh, and before they were approved by the council, which I did send those goals to you, we actually discussed a way to uh, rearrange the evaluation. And again, I'd like some time to talk about those thoughts as we try to come up with a way to format the evaluation. Uh, without going to too much trouble, um, I could actually spend a little time before next week and show you an example format. Uh, because I, I totally agree with you. I, not only did I hate filling it out, but when I had to deal with the responses from 13 people, it was brutal. Just brutal. So the, the chair just needs clarification here. Um, you were asking me to... Um to post a public meeting for 624 Wednesday from 1030 to 1230, our usual yeah. time. Yeah. Um, it's a special meeting of DOL and the only topic or the, 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 only, the only topic will be review and revise. 
um, the town manager evaluation process and forms and the forms and the goals no no we're we not going to do with goals on goals yet we do this committee does have to do the goals that are proposed to the council but they don't go to the council until august so you're suggesting put off the goals and focus right. the next special meeting on the process and on the councilor form the council right. form. so if you look at the things i sent you right it, the, the main thing I sent you was a timeline and right. at each point in the timeline where a new piece of it is introduced. I said note one, note two, note three. It goes all the way up to note eight. Yeah. Um, and we only really need to pay, pay attention right now to note one through four. And I did send you some documentation for note one to four. You know, it. it I haven't even completely completely scratched the surface of all the documents I have. Okay. I, sorry. <laughs> Just, happy no, no uh, I've run out of time. <laughs> Speaking of running out of time, um, we are uh, pretty much at time. Um, but so we will meet again in a week. I will have this posted and it will be a special meeting of GOL. Right. Um, I, I do want to ask one other thing too. Yep, please. And that is that um, we, in, in discussing um, the particularly the, um, the whole overall evaluation, but particularly discussing the staff, we did discuss, you know, whether or not at some point, and maybe again, not this year, but maybe a future year, we actually have a third party evaluator uh, work through that. It's just the problem is that's another 100,000 we don't have this year. Yeah. So it's, um, but a third party evaluation where they actually may interview uh, people, do a statistical sample, and in some cases they provide confidence to individuals that they would not be exposed, um, may actually help increase staff response if that becomes one of our goals. It okay. also, we also discussed the fact that we're not trying to do a 360, those of you that are familiar with evaluation, because it just is, um, it, it's just a very time consuming process. Again, we don't have time. Do we need to invite anyone to this other than the five of us? That's Unless just you all want to invite someone. I think if Angela, frankly, could be our note taker, it would be terrific because she has many of the files. Okay. And has been, like the rock solid bottom person for helping with that. Being people who could make contribution as well. In other words, could speak. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else besides Angela would be, if she's can be present, be helpful. The only one you, the only other person we might want to talk to would be Brianna. Yeah. And the other person would be Joanne from HR. So they're really all staff people who have been involved with this over time. I, I mean, unless you want to bring in Somebody else. Oh, no, no, I, I have no desire to add to the, we, it's, this task is difficult enough. And so I also, maybe my colleagues can weigh in here, uh, fellow committee members. Um, I'm just thinking, are there any individuals we need to have present to assist us in our task or would that simply make things more complicated? I think other than staff and other than the three names you've mentioned, I would not want to invite anyone else. And if we do invite people, we're actually inviting, would it be useful for them to be present as we hash our way through this. Um, I don't want to waste their time either. So um, do we need them is the question. If we do, I will ask um, the, the council clerk to, to issue them a Zoom invite. If we don't need them specifically to be present, then we'll be the five of us and, and hopefully Angela will be present and that'll be it. Andy Jo has her hand up. Andy, please. Yeah, so I think depending on how we're doing the form, Brianna would be tremendously helpful, but I'm not sure hashing through the form contents is necessarily something she needs to be present for right. versus right. when we get to the point of here's how we kind of want it, how can we make it easy to navigate, you know, <laughs> which which might be something that can be done not okay. with her in the meeting. Exactly. Right. right. Well, okay. Actually, Angela was the one that did the move at my request, moved the form last year into SurveyMonkey. 
And for short surveys, SurveyMonkey is fine. For long surveys, SurveyMonkey is brutal. Okay. We need to explore other options. And one of the things on my checklist, if you will, would be to talk to Serge to see whether, or to Sean, to see if they have any other suggestions. I, I may also talk with some former colleagues at the university to see if they have software suggestions. And, okay. And yeah. um, the only thing I was just for Lynn's sake to know that um, in my prior life, when I did nonprofit management consulting, I did do a couple of times where I was the one who was hired as a consultant to go out and interview staff yeah. for the purpose that you just said. And it is an interesting experience to do it. Uh, but I have had that experience. Yeah, and I actually would recommend that, you know, every three years or so that we have a process like that. Um, and, you know, my, my former professional life included things like that as well. So, um, but as we pay for that. <laughs> so well, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to listen to where counselors questions and issues have been and see what we can improve this year and then also starting to think ahead so that we can start thinking about how to improve this for years to come you know for instance angela just mentioned the other day in our phone conversation she thinks we should be doing this starting in march each year and not wait until the summer because people's heads have moved on to summer. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great suggestion. Um, and, you know, there was, it was really good to get the staff who have been involved in this giving us, giving me feedback. So okay. uh, Angela, if Angela could be here on as our minute taker and also as a reference point next week, I think that would be really good. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, the only other item I have on the agenda that I think we at least should touch on is the minutes and whether anyone's had a chance to look at them. I made two small changes um, and one question I have. I can leave this to next meeting, but we could also just get it out of the way. Have people had a chance to look at them? Um, if not, I can tell you the two changes I made um, and then you could just trust me. Um, but, or do you want, uh, that's it we have. Uh, and then future items. We've got things coming up, but right now we got something next week that's going to focus our attention. So I'm not going to worry too much about future items. We're going to postpone, obviously, um, the bylaws for future consideration. Your homework, you open, given a reprieve. Um, no, it's going to be two weeks uh, later. That's the way it goes in this business. Um, public waste process that Lynn has sent us, we can have to look at, but again, that's at least two weeks away from us now. Um, so minutes. You want to just do let me tidy them up and just send them off? Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. We need to vote to give you that authority. All right. So I'm going to, I've been given the authority to make two minor changes and then I'm going to send them to the council clerk um, for posting. Um, that's all I have. And it's only 1240. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not six hours, right? We couldn't have suspected it would take so long to get through that resolution. I thought it was, uh, the time I thought was well spent. Yeah. I didn't well, think there, was any, there, was, there well, wasn't a lot of dead that's time. That's the there. thing. You can't decide something can only be so long. Right. Because, you know, and I think that, you know, I don't want to sit through six hour meetings either. It was horrible. Wow. Um, but yeah. so we need to maybe think how we're scheduling things, like adding an extra hour. I don't know. Uh, I'd rather meet every Monday. I need to go because I have a meeting at one and I would like to pee. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'm adjourning the meeting. Um, it's, been a, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I, we got to do this again. I say in a week, we get together and try it again. Sounds good. Um, thank you. Thank you all thank very you. much. Andy, be good. Angela again, thank you.